In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a valid JSON response by using the ChatGPT API with Python. Now make sure to watch this video till the end because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to prevent an invalid JSON response caused by inefficient amount of tokens provided. And I'm going to show how to ensure that the data schema is always the same. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Thomas and you're watching Tom Stack Academy. Let's start right away. As you can see, I've already made a start with the following code. So I've included the OpenAI library. I've also imported a JSON library. And then I'm reading the file API text.txt, which is referring to this file. And that's where I have stored my API key. This is where I'm providing the API key. And as you can see, I'm just providing f.red, which is referring to this file again. Um, if you have any questions about this uh, function, about reading uh, data from text files, then you can refer to this website where you can find all the information. And as you can see, I've also designed a prompt, provide valid JSON outputs, provide the top 10 largest key resource in Europe, ranking them on slope kilometers, descending, provide one column name and a column slope kilometers, representing the total slope kilometers. So this seems a good prompt. Um, before I'm going to start, I'm just going to refer to the documentation from OpenAI. And you can see here the JSON mode and all the documentation uh, regarding this mode. So there are three important things. The first one, when using JSON mode, always instruct the model explicitly to produce JSON via some message in the conversation. The second one, the JSON in the message model returns may be partial. So it is possible that uh, in case you have set max tokens to a pretty low value, that the um, JSON text cannot be completed and that you get incomplete JSON, which is then causing an error in your script. So make sure that you provide enough tokens. And I'm going to tell a bit more about solving this specific issue at the end of this video. So make sure to watch till the end. And then the JSON mode will not guarantee the output matches any specific schema, only that is valid and parses without errors. So especially the third one is a bit tricky and in this video I'm going to show you how you can at least minimize the chance that you get JSON back in a different schema. So let's go back to VS Code and let's start with querying the API. Chat completion equals client dot chat dot completions dot create. And then I'm going to start by selecting the model. So the model is equal to GPT 3.5 Turbo. And here you have to make sure, at least at this moment, that you're referring to 11.06 or that you're referring to GPT 4 because those are the models that currently support JSON response. I'm as well going to set the response. So response format is equal to type and that's JSON object. So as I mentioned earlier, this functionality is only available in the latest models. Um, if you exclude it, you can also get JSON, uh, but this will guarantee that the, in, that the output will be in JSON. So let's continue with the messages, and that's a list containing dictionaries. And first I'm going to send a message from role system. where the content is equal to provide output invalid JSON. So and this, this is what we have earlier seen in the uh, documentation. Even if you use response format as JSON object, you still have to mention uh, either from a system message or from the user that the, um, uh, the output has to be in JSON. So that's pretty important. And let's just copy this one. Now the role is user. And here I'm just going to provide the prompt referring to the variable prompt. Then let's refer to the output. Then let's store the output in a variable. So let's say data is equal to chat completion dot choices zero dot message dot content. And let us print data on the screen. And this is the output that I uh, get most of the times when I query uh, this specific prompt. So first of all, you get an object ski resort, and then you get, um, as we requested, the name and the slope kilometers, where um, the name is in string format and slope kilometers are an integer. 
But the problem here is that I don't always get ski resorts. Sometimes it's just not there. Um, we are just starting with the name and the slope kilometers and there is not like some kind of a route object. And sometimes um, this is this this one is not called ski resorts, but it's called something like top 10 ski resorts, uh, etc. So uh, the response is is highly unstable and it differs a lot. And in order to avoid that, I'm just going to copy this, control C, and I'm going to save it in a variable. So let's call this one um, example JSON is equal to. And let's make sure that we also close the list and that we also close the dictionary. So now we have a valid JSON object. And what I'm going to do here, so we have here, please provide, provide output and valid JSON. Data schema should be like this. Plus, and here I'm going to type json.dumps. Sample JSON. So we are just going to return the JSON that we received the first time. And if you received a different output uh, when executing the API call, just make sure that you take um, uh, this one, that you take this um, schema that I have on my screen here. So we're basically taking this from the API and then we are giving it back to um, JGPT so it can use it as inspiration for the next uh, call. And this is a way to stabilize the, uh, the output of this model. Okay, now let's use the output here. So I'm gonna say ski resorts is equal to json.loads. And the JSON that I'm gonna load is data for ski resort in ski resorts. And here you have to make sure, and this is a bit confusing that you refer to ski resorts because that's basically the parent, um, the parent object that we see here. So we're referring here to this object and if ski resource wasn't there and we started directly with um, uh, these variables, then we could just uh, leave this one out. But it's, not, it's here for now, so let's use it. And then I'm gonna print ski resort name. Ski resort slope kilometers km showing that we are using kilometers and here you have to make sure um, because this variable is returned as an integer so you have to make sure that you convert it to a string with the str function let's run the script and as you can see we now get back the ski resorts in a predictable format I run this API call quite a few times and every time the format seems to be the same, but th the, the secret here is that you provide the JSON as input um, via, this, um, via this object here, example JSON, and that you then inject it here. I mentioned at the start of this video that it's possible that um, you run out of tokens and because of that you get an invalid JSON response. So what basically happens, let's uh, say that I'm gonna put max tokens Let's put it on, uh, on two, for example. And what basically can happen is that we um, provide uh, not enough tokens, and then we, for example, get only back this part of the string, and then um, we are not able to close the JSON. And this, this makes the JSON invalid and will also cause an error in our script. So I've set the max tokens to two. Let's run the script and let's see what happens. I see that immediately again an error because the JSON is invalid. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to solve this issue, or at least detect it when it happens. And if you navigate to the documentation of ChatGPT, you will see that we have choices here. Then we have choice zero, for example. And within uh, choice zero, we have the finish reason, which is equal to stop here. So let's see what the finish reason is um, once we reach the max uh, tokens. So I'm just going to say that finish reason is this and that should then be finish reason but finish reason print finish reason let's run the script again and I see here that the finish reason is length 
And let's now remove max tokens is two. And let's also see what the finish reason is now. And in this case, it's stop. So if we get like a healthy response, the finish reason is uh, stop. So let's do it like this. If finish reason is equal to stop, then I'm going to do all of this. And in any other case, we're going to print error provide more tokens, please. Let's put now max tokens again on two. Max tokens is two. Let's see what happens. Error, provide more tokens, please. Okay, let's remove it. Okay, so these are some ways to make sure that you can detect it when uh, you didn't provide enough tokens and you don't get invalid uh, JSON. And another way to make the JSON response more predictable. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video.